they have in their work, a pride that's traditionally been reflected in the respect they receive from their community. But sadly, that public attitude is changing, particularly amongst youngsters in some of Britain's inner cities. This week, 999's video reporter Juliet Morris has been taking a close-up look at the work of Salford Fire Station in Greater Manchester. They're turning out almost 8,000 times a year, but a surprising number of those are hoax or malicious calls. Juliet Morris joined White Watch at the start of an early morning training session. Here comes the dummy we're going to rescue, but before that we've got to fill this place with smoke to mimic a real fire. Have you got your lighter on you? Yes. I'll go and get a couple of bombs. Well, the smoke bombs certainly work. I can't see a thing, and I certainly can't see the body the crew's looking for. This is quite realistic now. Remember to communicate properly in the proper search procedures, boys. That sounds like the real alarm. Typical, it would have to go off now. Okay. Well, <laughs> training exercise is interrupted. We're off. Is this ours? Yep, okay. Yep. I'm riding on the first pump. Paul Gudgeon is the guy who's in charge. We're off to a call involving somebody who may be trapped. We've arrived at Woolworth. Somebody was reported as being stuck inside, so they've all got kitted out with their breathing apparatus. What is this? It's just a malicious call that somebody said is fine inside Woolworth and persons are reported. Even though they thought the call was a hoax, they couldn't take any chances. All the equipment needed to deal with the real thing is here. Doesn't it get you angry when you get called out for these sorts of things? Not really. It's part of the job, really. There's not much hanging around in the job, despite the fact that Salford's one of the busiest stations in the country. When they're not actually out on a 999 call, the lads are always busy training. And the training's taken extremely seriously, although half the calls turn out to be false alarms. Paul, why do the lads need more training? I mean, because they, they actually do the real thing every day. No, well, they don't do form every day. So it's all training is good, practice makes perfect. And I think you'll agree they're all perfect, you see. We've been called to a fire in an eight-floor flat, but uh, so far we can't see any sign of it. So, is this anything or nothing? It's and yet another malicious call. But good practice for the men, don't you think so? <laughs> While we were out on that call, a real blaze was raging nearby. We were sent on to back up a unit from another station. An empty flat had been completely gutted. Oh, I'm steaming up. My lens is... Lend your lamp, just to... It's all steamed up because it's so hot. Probably looking through the window, are you? Oh, that's steamed. Hold well on. Hang on, we need to wipe it with... Oh, hello. I can see you again. It's incredibly hot and smoky in here. You can taste that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's horrible. That's like foam filled furniture. <coughs> it's what so acrid, it'll attack, it attacks your lungs instantly. How come <coughs> you're not coughing? Because my lungs are broke. <laughs> <laughs> it does make your eyes water a bit as well. <coughs> the firefighters deal with all kinds of incidents, but now their job's made even more difficult by a changing attitude towards them. <laughs> These ones are spotless. These kids. They, they did what, the kids? Yeah, these are the ones that spot us last week. Before, you just had to be careful that you didn't burn yourself or you didn't trip up. Now you have to be careful that somebody won't actually throw any missiles at you, so you've got to have another eye, really. One in the back of your head and one round the side to make sure that they're not up to any mischief. The kids are, are quite often swearing at us and spitting at us. They'll mess around with our gear, they'll turn the hydrants off. Just generally a nuisance. In a new approach to the problem, the service is sponsoring a football team from the local lads club. Why do you think children do throw stones at the firefighters? Some of them are just bored and some of them, well, they just get off the mates. You know, once they do it, they can't stop doing it, you know. What do you think about people who do it? Just uh, stupid. Why do you think they're stupid? Because be, there could be someone stuck in the house and you can't get to them because of the thrown stone down. Be 15 children, but by sponsoring a game close to their hearts, it's hoped that this lot will help them get their message across. But we were in for a night of deliberate fires. Did you start that then? Did you start that? Here, a stolen gas cylinder had been set alight, 
half an hour later, it was a stolen car. So how come this is on fire, Paul? It, this is a, one of our areas where they generally leave them after they've been stolen. It's not unusual to have one or two cars here in a night. It feels like a Sierra estate. It's quite early, yeah. It's only like half past nine now, isn't it? We could be the bizarre challenge to reach a man who's trapped 